Hello everyone, welcome back to Time Capsule here on the GameStone Quick Hotfix, the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and show off speedruns of games that were popular or influential at the time of their release. I am your host, Smooth Operative, and tonight we travel back to the year 2003 with Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, and later, Beyond Good and Evil. But before we get started, I want to let everyone know that during this month of June, Games Done Quick will be donating all of its subscriber and bits revenue to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. The LDF seeks structural changes to expand democracy, eliminate disparities, and achieve racial justice in a society that fulfills the promise of equality for all Americans. LDF also defends the gains and protections won over the past 75 years of civil rights struggle and works to improve the quality and diversity of judicial and executive appointments. Please visit www.nwacpldf.org for more information on that. Thank you all so much for being here today. And with that, I do believe we are ready to kick off the show with Veneev and Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Veneev, hello. <laughs> Hi. And we have Grizz Bear here on commentary. So, um, Sands of Time. I'm excited. Me too. Should be a fun, very glitchy run. For sure. And whenever you're ready to start the timer, you just let me know. All right, cool. The time starts after this short cutscene. So I'll try and count it down the best I can. For sure. Three, two, one. All right, good luck. Thanks. All right, Sands of Time. So this is the first game in the trilogy. And for the first four minutes, we're just gonna have pretty basic gameplay with some minor skips here and there. But then after that, it's gonna get real glitchy. And that's why we're able to finish the game in under an hour. I have a uh, Grizz Bear here to commentate with me too. How are Hello. you doing, Grizz Bear? Uh, it's one o'clock in the morning here. I'm tired, but I'm staying awake for Santa Times at full. I appreciate so it. It's if you've never seen a, any percent run of this game, it's gonna look very complicated, and you're not really gonna perfectly understand what's going on because this has been routed in such a way that um, every single action has a purpose. So while it may look very weird. Trust me, Veneev knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start, like, the main glitch we use in this run is called zipping. And we'll start, like, explaining that pretty early because it's a very complicated glitch and has a lot of uses. But uh, for the first bit here, since in order to use the glitch, we need uh, the rewind time power, which we don't get until about four minutes into the run. So we got to get that first and then we can start going super fast. You notice there when I fell, I took a bit of fall damage. That actually is important to the routing of the run. So throughout like right now I get a full heal after this first section. So that damage like doesn't count for later. But after we get the, the dagger of time and we're able to rewind time, I want to take 30 damage throughout the entire run so I can die faster later on. It's kind of a minor thing, but. Yes. If you're too close to walls or enemies, you jump, and that's fantastic. That little skip there is probably like the funniest skip in this section. You just like, if you jump up to that ledge at an angle, he just kind of like teleports over to the side and speeds it up a little bit. We don't really know why. <laughs> Should probably mention as well that um, whenever you do an action for the first time, the game will try and put you in like this slow motion camera thing. So what we right. will do is you'll uh, either reset the camera or go into a landscape view, which uh, erases that slow-mo and just doesn't happen for the rest of the game. Yeah, the first action of wall running, we were able to cancel by like just breaking a furniture item right after. But then when I jumped off the wall there, I canceled it with the landscape view. I actually forgot that was a thing because I'm just so used to canceling them. <laughs> 
So coming up here, we're supposed to go like on these ledges and climb back up and get the dagger that's there. But you can actually like, there's a hole where you're normally supposed to exit right to the right there. So we can actually enter it this way to get to it a lot quicker. So if I line up here and nice first try. World record pace. <laughs> yes, this is the way you're supposed to normally exit this area, but we can just enter it this way and then go as far as about there and that'll hit a trigger which um, sets it so we have the dagger. So when we uh, come back here, the next area will just load and then we'll have the dagger of time, which is quite a bit faster than watching the cutscene to get it. And another jump. Cool. <laughs> All right, so zipping. <laughs> so now that we have the dagger of time, because of the way we obtained it, we don't have any sands of time yet. So I'm going to kill a couple enemies to get to sand and then we can just continue on. And we're going to do this glitch called zipping, which um, because the rewind timer only has a certain amount of memory, if you spam actions, uh, which I'm going to do very efficiently by just scrolling the mouse wheel, because I have uh, forward movement and backwards movement binded to it. So if I spam a lot of inputs like that and then rewind, once I do enough in the rewind, it gets overloaded. And for some reason, that causes actions to get boosted. So that sword roll I just did gets extended across the map. And because you're rewinding, you just don't have collision. So that's why I just go through uh, walls. But conveniently, you still hit load triggers. So even though I'm doing this glitch to travel across across maps, we still hit load triggers. To start off, these zips are very simple, but uh, I believe this one's quite complicated because it involves side rolling. So this actually takes you quite far. And the reason why Vinny goes in the first person camera there is to aim it in a very precise way so that he will pop out exactly where he needs to and hit all the load triggers. Yeah, that zip like can be a reset point. And, and I could have taken a checkpoint. I probably should have, but I just kind of didn't think about it. <laughs> but we're first try, so no problem. So yeah, this zip is probably like the most complicated one we do, like at the start at least. And uh, we do the air attacks there, like the jump attacks. And what what that when you zip that action, it actually sends you downwards. So I'm doing a couple of those so I don't die from fall damage. We take a death here because we've zipped so far that we've missed a lot of load triggers. But that area is quite nice to us as it you get a checkpoint there straight away. So we just die on that pool and just reset the checkpoint, and then we're good to go from there. Really glad I got that zip first try because. You need to zip just walking steps, which can be kind of difficult. So one thing I didn't mention with zipping is because you have two different rewind speeds in this game. See, if I don't hold a movement direction, I rewind slowly like this. And I assume it's just for aesthetic purposes with the game. But for zipping, what it does is if you're rewinding slowly, you actually zip much further than if you were fast rewinding. So for certain zips, when we need to travel like a very large distance, we need to use the slow rewind like that. But we generally try to route the zips to use fast because it's faster. <laughs> so I'm just backtracking for a load trigger there. Sometimes it's faster or just like only possible to hit certain load triggers by backtracking after. So we'll often like zip past a certain area load and then just backtrack and hit it that way. 
but there's going to be a lot of other zips where I hit load triggers during the zip and you'll see the area deload. Those ones are pretty cool. But basically the only limitation to zipping is like the rewind timer. So that's how long you can rewind, which for this game is like very large. There's quite a bit of time to rewind. So you can do uh, very large zips. Then the other limitation is load triggers. So here I need to slow rewind because we need to go like very far down and also forward. So the down zip uh, pulled me really far down and then I was able to just use the dagger to go forward. So this is the dad fight, but there's a convenient checkpoint outside the area here. So if I roll there, it should, okay, it worked, good. So I hit a checkpoint trigger and we're just, uh, this is where you spawn after the fight and watch the cutscene. That's a nice zip where you can see what's happening. See, he just kind of like flies across the map. It's pretty great. <laughs> There's a couple more where you'll get to see exactly what the zip is doing and see how just how far they'll send you. The, probably the best thing about this route is that you basically spawn in and zip to sand cloud after sand cloud after sand cloud, which refills your uh, sand tank, which is in the upper left. And each zip consumes a single sand tank. And if uh, Veneve were to mess up at all, what would happen is um, it would ruin his route as the sand route is quite limited in terms of uh, how many sand clouds you can get. There are more extra that you can pick up along the way, but um, the route that he's using is uh, quite quite finite on the amount of sands that he can use. I just had to die again there because I messed up the inputs and the zip is pretty specific. So I couldn't like set it up manually. Okay, I'm gonna get a cutscene here, but that's all right. Normally what you would do there is hit the low trigger for this area during the zip. And then that would also skip this cutscene. This area has a low trigger all the way on the right hand side there. So I need to like zip across this way and then we can do the down zip to go down. And hopefully that hit the low trigger. My aim was actually kind of bad. It might have missed it. But we will find out soon. All right, we're good. If I missed it, this area would be a uh, not loaded properly. So we're going to get a game over here because we've zipped so far that the game has lost Farah, our companion for this speedrun. Um, and what we're going to do is, at every single opportunity, is just leave Farah behind in such a way that the game forgets about her for a moment so that we can continue zipping without getting those continuous game overs at every interval. As the game has a lot of checks for Farah going through the maps, and we're trying to just maneuver around those checks for Farah so that we can get through without it with as minimal game over us as possible. Yeah, so right there, like we just used the Farah game over to die quickly. But you also need to die because of the area too. I believe it's a load trigger that's ahead of you. Because sometimes um you can you can death abuse to load triggers that you skipped. But sometimes we death abuse to load triggers that we have yet to hit because for some reason the game is just like set like it'll load triggers that are ahead of you on, on mm. certain checkpoints. So here we're going to do exactly what Chris just mentioned. Fair is there, but we don't want to deal with her. So we're going to do a roll zip, which is actually slower than just moving up there. But we want to leave fair behind. So that's why we do that.
And then we can we need to zip from over here because if I walk any further, we'll game over. I'm gonna do this really safe too. Right, so I did inputs backwards there because if I move forward, I'll get a checkpoint. Which if I messed up that zip, it would put me in an infinite game over loop. So I took that real safe, but we got it. No problem. So that's if there would normally game over. But because of the rule zip we did to leave Pharah behind, it doesn't. You'll see the area deload here too. It's a cool zip. And we also hit another one by falling down. Like I do my zip inputs because I only I don't want to waste any rewind. So I just like do the inputs and then fall down after and I can rewind and still have the load trigger hit. So, uh, Vinay, you're running the PC version of the game, but can the zips be done in uh, the console versions of this game or no? They can, but because the console versions run at 30 FPS, they don't go as far. Uh, okay. So, like, every distance that's being zipped would go, like, roughly half the distance that it does in this version. So you okay. can still do it, but you would need to, like, reroute all the zips to right. find other ones. And some zips just wouldn't be possible because of the distance difference. That's fair. And you can also make them go fa go further if you turn VSync off. But we have that as an actual rule, like you're supposed to have VSync on, so it just runs it at 60 FPS. But if you turn those off, the zips would go like basically way too far to ever be <laughs> useful. <laughs> you would just keep going and going and going. Yeah. That was a nice release timing, but also kind of scary because... I don't think I mentioned that, but when you when you zip a jump, um, if you don't release at the right time with the rewind, you'll you'll die from fall damage because you'll be like rewinding after the jump. Oh right, and then you like caught in this death loop kind of. Yeah. But certain zips like this one, see, so yeah, I just did that like uh, block jump at the end, which would normally kill me, but it just so happens that the height I need to get to is the same height as the zip. So I can just zip a full jump and not die from fall damage. You're probably used to it by now, but when you first learned this run uh, and all the zips, did you did you ever find it funny? Like, were, were you ever catching yourself laughing during practice or anything like that? From zipping itself? Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> zipping, you can get into a lot of uh, funny situations with zipping. Yeah, I think that's why Especially I love when you watching make a mistake. this run. Yeah, mm -hmm. because he's just all over the place. Yeah. The zip, you actually could zip this area in one uh, zip, but because it uses the slow rewind timer, it's just faster to do two quick zips like this. That's one like kind of like trap you can get into of routing this game, thinking that like doing one zip is better than multiple, but it's not always true because of fast rewinding. I gotcha. Another death abuse here. The load trigger we load with that death abuse is actually a load trigger that Farah normally hits. It's kind of strange. But like Farah as your companion would pull a lever and that hits the load. But thankfully you can just death abuse and it'll load it anyway. Do we know what happens to Farah in these uh, interesting times here? <laughs> I believe she's just like, she's out of bounds somewhere and she's in a state we call like twisted neck because that's like what she looks like when she's out of bounds. Oh, right. Her neck Her... is just like twisted. Yeah. Oh, no. So I believe she's just stuck in that state most of the time. That's a, that's actually a horrifying image to imagine. Farrah yeah. Is out there in, in the, the abyss but... kind of. Well, most runners don't like her anyway, because in, in the zipless category, um, Fair can cause your run to die a lot of the times because um, she just doesn't behave properly in the game crashes or game overs. It's kind of weird. She's and we turn invisible, by the way. Don't worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, that's because there's a, there's a cutscene we skipped 
that the prince would like tear off his part of his clothing. And so since we skipped that, the game just kind of like updates and realizes you have the wrong clothing and then just turns you invisible. The ultimate camouflage. Yeah. <laughs> It's another cool zip. This is a relatively new zip that me and uh, another runner, Smathlax, figured out. Normally, like, what we would do before is fall down and then zip closer to the door. But we found a setup up there that also works. And it's like six seconds faster. It's pretty good. Nice. All right, so for this zip, um, let me just do it first and I'll explain. Perfect. Yeah, so that one, um, I didn't mention before, but the way the down zip works is it sends you down first and then back up, but the net gain and height is still down. So what I can do there is I can slow rewind the down part and then fast rewind the up part. So then the net gain will be a lot further down than it normally would if I just slow rewinded the whole thing. And I did two of those so that I go like really far down because that area is like a big uh, cavern that you're supposed to go down. So it's like really, really far down. We'll do that again when we get to the prison. I'm trying like so hard not to crack up laughing over here because the prince looks so goofy. Yeah. <laughs> So here I'm going to take a save. There's no like checkpoint there, so I actually need to take the save. And normally what we do in runs here is just crash the game and then reboot it because it's faster. But I'll just take a death abuse instead just so I don't like cut the run like that. It's not that much slower anyway. So with that game over, it fixed the load triggers. And unfortunately, back to regular prints. Yeah. No, boo. <laughs> this zip can possibly crash, so hopefully it doesn't. All right, we're good. Uh, thankfully, you do save right before it, so even if it did crash, I could just try again. So since I hit the load trigger there, the cutscene that's normally in front of this area is not there. So the way the routing is, we just like do that zip to disable the cutscene and then we just walk the distance. And then save this last sand to get out of the well here. Those things in the background are actually just the sand clouds of that area. Kind of funny, like certain like not everything gets deloaded on the first load trigger. Sometimes it takes a couple. This is another zip and crash, but it's pretty avoidable. There's actually quite a bit of like crash avoidance you need to do with this run, but everything is like figured out except for like random crashes. Those can still happen in certain spots. But all the crashes that can happen with like zipping, we just route around it. So the zip is very complicated. And I got a first try. Nice. That's really good. So that's another side rule zip. It's going across to hit multiple load triggers. Can I ask how long you have been running Prince of Persia and kind of why you decided to choose this uh, series? Uh, I think I started running it back in like 2015 or something. Okay. And yeah, I just like, I originally started with zipping and I just love the games in general too. So I started and then like when I started running the zipping categories, I just love how fast it is and how fast paced the run is. Would you say that it is difficult to learn how to do the zips? Um, it's not difficult to like learn how to zip. So all I need to do is just spam inputs. 
but to get like a, to get efficient at doing it and consistently it takes a bit because there is a lot of minor things that go into zipping right. so if you miss like one little input it's like not yeah gonna work. <laughs> yeah like there's this thing called animation canceling which is a very subtle difference like here i let the role completely play out before i do inputs because if i started inputs too early and cut the role short the distance would change and then i just wouldn't make it to this platform so that like minor difference if you didn't know that you would just be failing that zip and not knowing why oh uh, right over and over even like that's if we did back there with the side rolls that one's like specifically difficult because of the jump attack as well you might have noticed there i did a jump dagger attack instead of a sword which is just preference but if you do a jump dagger attack um if you do it immediately then your height difference is nothing so you zip back up to where you were before but if you delay it you actually go up in the air a little bit a certain amount and so I'm actually time, timing the jump dagger attack Wait, to go up a certain amount. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just like delaying that jump dagger attack to go up a specific amount. And I missed all low triggers. Cool. <laughs> Aww. That happens on that zip. My It's probably my jump dagger timing, but it's honestly hard to tell. Wait, let's see where this corridor goes. Could also be my aim. Oh, okay, that's okay. So ideally that goes in the hallway there, but I can just use an extra sand to zip the door here. Nice. Optimally that zip actually hits four load triggers, which is kind of crazy. That might be like a record. I've never <laughs> thought yeah. about that before. Like most zips hit like Four. hit like one, maybe two, but very rarely you'll get zips that hit like a lot. Like this zip only hits one. There's just one in the entrance there. I'm just shifting my camera there because of the enemies. It kind of helps them like they usually spawn away from you if you shift the camera. All right, we're going to do a quick zip here. And then hopefully zip down to the prison area, which is kind of awkward because we're on these ledges. But we can actually do jumps on these ledges and they'll zip down similar to, similarly to the jump attacks. I'm going to zip over there to avoid a fixed camera that happens. And then do these jumps to zip downwards. And then I just did a first person glitch there. You want to explain that, Grizz? A glitch that I actually can do. Yeah. Uh, oh, my so... position's off. That's okay. Yeah, fine. Uh, what the first person glitch is, is you need, it requires a controller to do it. Because as soon as you go into the first person camera, you can tilt the analog stick left, right, backwards, whatever direction you want, and it will rotate the prints in like 90 degrees, left, right, or uh, flip you around backwards. And when you're on an invisible ledge, or you can even create invisible ledges through first person glitching, you can just walk on air um, continuously into the void for as long as you want. So it's it's really useful for changing direction midair while you're in that state. There is another yeah, so... place where you could use it in this run, but it's it's not optimal to do in a marathon run because it saves like four seconds at the very start of the game, and it's very difficult to do. Right, those two you can do in dagger. Yeah, yeah. There is one more instance of it that we'll use towards the end of the run the to avoid a checkpoint that gets rid of our dagger. Or a cutscene, rather. So that zip, I'm actually going to switch rewind speeds halfway through a jump to get to a certain height. And unfortunately, that time I didn't grab the ladder, so I got to try it again. Just 
watching the prince fall into the hole. Yeah. The zip is probably like the most annoying one to me besides last fight skip. Because you need, there we go. You need to grab a ladder, which is very specific. So now that we got out of prison, we'll just do double roll zip here. Just to zip as much distance as we can since we need to get past that door anyway. And that's the last sand cloud we'll get for the run. But we do and need a bit more rewind, so we'll probably we need to kill some enemies later. Yeah, we're just about to do the longest fight of the game. This is the elevator, which you can just zip straight up and hit all the load triggers that you need. Nice five minutes saved. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to check that. Yeah, it should be okay. The zip is, uh, since we zip up here, you can't just like go to the top of the hourglass to trigger the cutscene like you would normally do because it's just not there or it's disabled. But what we can do instead is zip out here and there's another cutscene. The next cutscene that plays is still loaded down here. So if we fall, that should be fine. Right on here, then it just gets triggered and then we can continue like that. And then we now we chill for like two minutes because we can't skip this cutscene, unfortunately. <laughs> I did see a uh, comment in the chat. Are the second and third iterations equally as glitchy? Yes, zipping is a thing across all three of the Sam's Trilogy games. Um, first person glitching is unique to uh, Sands of Time, but Warrior Within and Two Thrones have their own uh, glitchy mess that is useful for speedrunning as well. But zipping it across the board works in every every one of the three games. Yeah, the first person glitch, the like the ledges, invisible ledges itself too, get like more and more fixed as the games go on. There, you can get it. You can get invisible ledges with this game like pretty easily, but then where you're within, you can really only do it if you zip off of a ledge. Um, uh, but then two you, thrones, you can't do it like at all. You can also do it from a menu uh, glitch. Right, that's true. Yeah. Which is another glitch that this game doesn't have. The only thing to take note of is that all three of the Sands games are just broken. Yeah, very broken. And zipping is across all three. But Warrior Within and Two Thrones don't have the different rewind speeds. So that is something unique to this game. And they also don't have down zipping. So the jump attacks that I'm doing to zip downwards but they do have uh, drop glitching, which is a different way to go down. So like you can just essentially do the same thing, but in different ways. You can even incorporate a drop glitch into a zip so that when your zip ends, you're already in the drop glitch animation so that you're, you can literally end your zip just falling into the volume. Yeah, and you can still drop glitch in this game. You just can't throw your weapon, so you can't do it that way. But if I zipped like drinking water, then when you're falling in the air while drinking water, you're not going to take fall damage. So you can do that. You can zip like, and so you can zip like drinking water and also being knocked down from an enemy. Those animations will avoid fall damage. Yeah, one thing to note about this specific run, 80% standard, is that we're using a lot of one glitch. We've seen first person glitching, but that's about the only other glitch we've seen in this run. Whereas this game, uh, not including the other two, this game itself has a lot of glitches that can be used to uh, speed up the game itself, which is why we have three categories for Sands of Time. Uh, any percent standard, which is this run, uh, any percent zipless and NMG for no major glitches. Um, we do not have a glitchless category because it is quite literally impossible to complete a Prince of Persia game without encountering some sort of glitch. Yeah, calling it calling a run glitchless for this game really doesn't fit at all. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I had to walk down those stairs to hit triggers. There is a zip for these stairs, but it's not very RTA friendly. But now that I hit all the triggers, I can just zip up to the tomb, where, where, which you would get after doing that puzzle. Now here's where we're going to kill a couple enemies. And I'm going to do a safe route to try to do this final skip called Last Fight Skip. Um, so I'm going to kill one more enemy to get full sand. Oh, no. I think I broke my reset camera, but that's okay. If you go in landscape during like killing an enemy, then you break the reset camera button, which is kind of annoying, but it's okay. So I'm going to jump around that door to skip that puzzle. And then I have to do this first person glitch because there's a cutscene there that would get rid of my dagger of time. And I really don't want that because then I can't zip anymore. I think to like point out as well is that Venevil, uh, he favors keyboard and mouse and first person glitching requires the use of a controller because of the analog stick input. So, for first person glitching like that, you have to quickly use the analog stick to do the first person glitch, and then switch back to keyboard and mouse just to continue the actual, the the movement throughout the um, next part of the stage just for comfort. So yeah, it's quite difficult to micromanage the controller and keyboard and mouse at the same time for those kind of glitches. I wish I could just use controller, but alas. <laughs> Join us. For this category specifically, it's like way more comfy. You can still do use controller. You just have to switch to the mouse when you do your inputs. Oh, did I, did I mess that? Yeah, I messed that up. Uh, oh wait, I didn't, okay. Cool, okay, I thought I went too far, but apparently it was okay. They won't scare me like that. <laughs> yeah, so we can't die here at all because we would lose the dagger of time because we're not meant to have it in this section so every little zip is quite tricky to get right as well so you have to be very careful with your zipping because if you lose one then you've lost the dagger and lost the ability to zip we actually wouldn't we would go back to the start of the stairs so we would still have the the dagger but we would have to do all of that again which would be a lot of oh, time yeah because you because we skip like the all the checkpoint yeah. and stuff yeah Oh wait, no, I don't want to do this. I'm doing like my default. <laughs> I want to do this other route. That's the zip I was about to do is what you would normally do in runs to zip right up to the last fight area. But I want to do this safer route. Just we should point out over here. Should probably point out as well what we're calling last fight in this game is not technically the last fight of the game yeah <laughs> the last real fight in this game because you have the last fight and then you have the final boss of zia fight so it's just something that we refer to as like actual last fight because it's an actual real fight rather than whatever the zia is so doing that route hit the checkpoint there so if i die i'll just respawn there instead of a way back at the mystical puzzle uh, but it also loaded the area, so I can just zip up to this, the what we call the last fight area. This is where you normally kill a bunch of enemies, which I'll probably end up having to do, but we'll try and do this skip. Which is like a couple pixels of aim that I need to get, so it might take me a minute here. Okay, that's the aim. So this area actually has a trigger to end it, like really far out for some reason. We don't know why it's so far away, it just is. So we need to zip all of this stuff slow rewinded. And if we get super lucky, I'll hit a trigger and get teleported to the Vizier. Which, holy shit! <laughs> actually yeah, got it, oh my god. 
Nice one. I, I don't believe that. Oh my god. I did not expect you to get that. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> oh my god. I will handle this intruder. That is actually a very difficult zip. Like, well done, me, for getting that first try. That's time. And then, <laughs> yeah. Wow, you okay. Can, you can just zip to the credits <laughs> outside the Vizier fight, and yeah. <laughs> so there wasn't much warning for the end of that, but oh, I did yeah. not I was expect like, that to work. We were like, just casually, oh, well, end time. I'm like, yeah. oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, so nice. that we hit the trigger to teleport it to the Vizier area, which skips, like, doing that entire fight. Which well, takes was... like, which saves two minutes, and then we can just zip after that cutscene to hit the credits trigger that's conveniently in the air out in the balcony, and that ends the run. <laughs> that was honestly incredible. Mm. Like, thank you so much for running <laughs> this game. <laughs> no um, problem. If you enjoyed that run, please make sure you follow Vanip here on Twitch. Um, do you have any uh, thing that you guys would like to say before we uh, switch over to the next well, run? What What was the time actually? The time was, uh, I think it was a little beforehand, but I stopped it at 38.39. That, that's really good for a marathon it, run. It Sub 40 is been, incredible. Yeah, it probably would have been like more like 38.35, but I was like, it, it caught me off guard. Yeah, even like just 38 anything is really good. Yeah, very I put, I put the estimate at 50 because like there is a lot of places that can crash and stuff. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, fair. but my average time is usually like 45, 42. So that's really good. Yeah. Oh, that was that epic. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, all right, everyone, we're going to set up for the next game, but I'd like to remind everyone again, uh, again, that during this month of June, Games Done Quick will be donating all of its subscriber and bits revenue to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Thank you to everyone so far who has contributed. We'll be back in a moment. Alright everyone, welcome back to the Game Zone Quick Hotfix Time Capsule 2003. Uh, we have the next game, which is Beyond Good and Evil, and our runner Steve TV Online is here ready to show it off for you. Hi Steve! Hello! Uh, welcome everyone. Um, I know a lot of people have seen this game before or have played it and heard a lot of pretty good things about it. Um, this might be your first time watching the game. Um, there are major skips in the game that we'll actually be doing probably the first big skip that we'll be starting out at the very beginning of the game. Um, my commentator here is voiceless uh, speaker. Hi there. And uh, he's going to help me out with some of the commentary through the game. So the timing begins that the second that I hit a new game here in three, two, one, go. So right away, we're going to be going right into a cutscene. Uh, this cutscene just shows kind of, talks about what's going on throughout the game. What exactly is happening here at the very beginning, Voiceless? So uh, the, the Hillian people are, uh, are we, we will find ourselves on the planet Hillis, and the, this, these people are under attack by the Doms. Uh, they're these uh, alien race that uh, have uh, these like kind of infectious kind of look to them. And they, uh, they, they're always at the forefront of, of trying to take over new civilizations. And these alpha sections uh, we hear about in this interview are supposed to protect the people of Hillis against the, uh, these Dom's creatures. And now uh, the protagonist gets introduced. So our main protagonist here is Jade. And she is sitting here doing a little bit of her yoga with uh, one of the... One of the uh, orphans that she protects on this lighthouse here and if you listen to the music if you think this music is great you'll enjoy the music throughout the whole entire game the music is gorgeous throughout this entire game but something happens while she's doing her yoga and the sky turns green which she has obviously seen multiple times living in this world so she wants to get him to safety and what she's going to try and do is she's going to try and throw up the shield and the shield will go up for just a second and then it's going to tell us that the shield is 350 units short and we can't really do anything about it. So uh, all of these things that are falling in the background, they're actually called Dom Sarcophagi and that's what she's trying to protect the orphans from getting captured in. And 
Then we'll go into our first battle. Uh, Jade uses a bow staff for all of her attacking, and our main form of movement is to use a attack, attack, break, and then attack. And this is actually our fastest and most powerful movement that we're going to be doing throughout the entire game. So as you can see, all of the orphans are getting uh, are getting uh, trapped into the Dom sarcophagi, and we need to save them. Yeah, anytime you see the color green in this game, you know it's bad news because the Doms are fully associated with that color. Except for Jade, obviously. Well, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Alright, so first things first here is we're going to do attack, at oops, attack, attack, and then break, and then attack. That's the move you're going to be looking for. Attack, attack, break, attack. We're going to be doing it to all of these guys here. And it's the fastest movement for attack. And then after we attack that one, we're going to go up here and it's going to go into slow motion. I have to take a little bit of a, a longer break in order to do the, the third movement because it's obviously in slow motion. If you go too soon, you're going to be doing a... You can kind of do a, a backup of uh, a 1-2-3 attack, then 1-2-3 attack. But that was almost a perfect fight there. And then we're going to walk towards where the Dom sarcophagi landed in. And then we are actually going to get sucked up by what is underneath the ground here. Yeah, this game is very much a cinematic experience. There's a lot of story moments and uh, cutscene cutscenes that uh, we'll kind of have to watch because there's no skip for them. So uh, I highly recommend you also, if you play this game casually, uh, uh, to watch all the cutscenes and uh, get invested in the story because it, it sure has some cool moments. If you're curious about that last song that we did while we were fighting those Doms enemies, it was called Dancing with the Doms, and it's actually one of my favorite songs in the entire game. But now, now that she collapsed, we're going to be hearing a, our next person coming in, and this is Paige. This is... Probably everybody that's played the game, this is their favorite character. This is Jade's uncle. And he's going to hand us back our bow staff, and we're going to learn a new move here, and that's our charge attack. So in order to kill this enemy, you want to do your charge attack, then you want to attack him once. Charge attack. Attack. Charge attack. Attack. Then one more time, we're going to do a charge attack, and then attack it, and then the boss will be over. Normally in a casual fighting scenario there, you would think that you have to attack him as much as you can, but uh, the less you attack, the easier it is to kill him. Yeah, some bosses in this game have a uh, set phase that you have to go through rather than actual amount of health that they have. So right here, we have, after almost every single boss that we're going to be fighting, actually, it is after every single boss that we fight, we're going to be collecting a pearl here. And these pearls are going to be very important inside of the game because uh, with a, a big skip that we're going to be having coming up really soon in the beginning of the game, we're going to be using one pearl, and then the rest of the time we're going to be we're going to have to collect thirty pearls in order to get to spoiler alert the moon. That's our goal is to get to the moon. Yeah, normally you'd be using these pearls to get a bunch of upgrades for your hovercraft, but we will be skipping most of those except for the very last upgrade of the game. And you unlock these normally through various uh, means, either through mini games, uh, little side dungeons, etc. So you can very much see this as a as a, as like stars in, in a Mario run, I suppose. All right, so we go right out of one cutscene back into another cutscene with the alpha section, sections coming down, and they're just, all we have to do is take one roll forward, and Jade is going to go up to the top. This very beginning of the game is one like a third of it being cutscene, and the other two quarters being uh, well quarter of the other three quarters of the game being movement. Striking the civilian population. Luckily, our elite forces have once again arrived in the nick of time. And here we can clearly see the alpha section coming in the nick of time. After the whole battle's already over, they come to save everybody, like the good uh, Samaritans that they are. Even though they have skulls all <laughs> as emblems all over their bodies. There's a lot of good dialogue that sometimes we might be quiet for because we just, some of the dialogue is pretty funny. 
in my opinion, just to hear uh, to hear it happen. Yeah, and this game also has multiple uh, uh, languages uh, that has uh, is fully voiced as well. So if you want to hear the game in a, in a different language, uh, that's also an option. And the uh, dialogue in those other languages is is a uh, pretty well dubbed, I would say. Didn't you say you used to run on the Dutch version of it for quite a while? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I used to switch between uh, Dutch, German, English, and uh, French. But uh, Dutch is my favorite because I'm Dutch as well. <laughs> There's not anything right. like that. So now we are, we're waking up from uh, from collapsing from whatever that enemy was that captured us. And we're going to find out there's no power. So all these Vorax are going to be flying around uh, willy-nilly. And um, then we meet Secundo once again. And he gets he has an idea for us. Secundo's idea, this whole dialogue, is that if we take pictures for... Uh, the, uh, this one part of the government, she wa they want us to take pictures of the of creatures throughout the entire world, and they want uh, if we do that, we'll get enough money to uh, be able to get get all of our uh, our shields up and running. And if you do enough, you get a pearl. However, we're only going to be collecting three major pictures to get money throughout this entire run and only three uh even though that's like part of the story of this game yeah uh it used to be in any percent that uh before a major skip uh, that we needed a lot more pearls so we would be getting a lot more pictures from various creatures to get these pearls throughout the run so we're gonna grab our camera right here we're gonna go into our tutorial to get into our camera and then we're gonna leave we're going to try and see if we can get an early cycle here in a Vorex. We unfortunately did not, so we're going to run all the way over here. We're going to get a picture of him. This Vorex is one of the first pictures that we need in order for uh, us to continue on into the game. Come on. And then we're going to go into another cutscene once again of us showing uh, the shield going back up and then a message that's received to Jade. So that's our mission box there. So now we're going to run over here, just follow it into Paige's workshop. We're going to do a little roll. You're going to see me do rolls into the... Uh, you're gonna see me do rolls into the cutscenes because since our uh, the hitbox, uh, since our head has a hitbox, obviously, if we roll into it, it's gonna to get to the cutscenes a little bit faster than normal. Yeah, overall, the best um, movement option is running, but that a roll has a slight burst of movement at the very start, and then a lot of end lag. So if you start it in the uh, into a hitbox, then you're just a little bit quicker. All right. So he was talking about this M disc the whole time. We're gonna run over here and we have to grab the M disc. This M disc we have to grab and we have to listen to it in order to continue on through the story. So we're gonna go into here and we're going to hit A and just repeatedly just mash through what the M disc is telling us about. So what is this mission exactly that they want us to go on, Voiceless? So it it talks about this Mr. DeCastlack, and he's very interested in a picture of these two Dom's creatures that are found in the Black Isle, and he wants this uh, one picture that has uh, the duplicates of these two monsters uh, in it. Uh, and he, uh, as Paige is saying here, it sounds dangerous, uh, and uh, but we need the dinero, so uh, <laughs> we're gonna try to uh, try to do it anyway. So whatever whatever Paige is telling us to do right here, we're just going to ignore him completely and follow him outside of the outside of his workshop and uh, help him get the hovercraft running. So if I hold the camera in a certain angle and then I roll, okay, I did it wrong. But if you roll in the right direction, you should be able to roll right outside of that. So now we're gonna go all the way down here to this this light that's right this uh 
electricity box and push it forward. Like Paige couldn't think of us doing this a long time ago. Okay, let's get at it. And then we're gonna light this up, which is going to give power to another one of Paige's inventions, which is the hovercraft. So as you can see, I can run around a little bit here, but you don't want to move around because it can actually mess up where your movement is in this little area. Yeah, this game has a lot of little quirks like that, where after a cutscene, it sometimes resets your position to this very unfortunate spot, so we want to stay still until we actually get control of movement again, and then do so. So now we're going to we're going to try and head over to Mama Goat's garage, which you can see right in front of us behind that boat that's sailing, so we're going to go forward and hopefully make it there before something happens. But unfortunately, it doesn't. The battery dies, so we're going to need a little boost from Mama Go Garage from a tow truck. So uh, going into Mama Go's garage, I'll explain in just a second. Just listen to this music. All right, so there's a skip inside of the Mamago Garage that's massive. This one saves about 45 minutes to an hour in the game, depending on how well and if the game allows you to do it. So can you explain what it's about, Voiceless? Yeah, so this skip has been hypothesized for a really long time. So in this game, you have two vehicles. You have the hovercraft, and later on, very much near the end of the game, you get this ship called the Beluga, and it's a spaceship, uh, and it's kept hidden from you. But... Uh, throughout the game, you want to collect these upgrades for the hovercraft, right? Like, uh, there's a jump jet, there's a cannon, and for all of that, you need pearls. But uh, the Beluga, the spaceship, has all these upgrades already installed in it. So, uh, uh, because you can upgrade the, the spaceship as well with the, the last upgrade, uh, namely the space engine, uh, we want to... We tried to look for a way that we could maybe uh, uh, enter the loading zone for the Beluga and immediately get it, uh, uh, like, like, just unlock the beluga straight away uh, but for the longest time we couldn't find a way to get that but now thanks to a new glitch about found about a year ago uh we can now uh, as you see steve here positioning his camera above this electricity box here uh, we can uh, if we're lucky push the camera out of bounds and this starts makes the game freak out and w when this happens jade's position gets luckily reset to be uh, at the loading zone for the beluga which then gives us the spaceship straight away uh, but this skip is still quite hard to get like even though we have a setup uh it's still kind of finicky like we will try to push the camera back multiple times but it just won't go through so we'll have to try it for maybe a little while here um but at least you get to enjoy some of the best music in the entire thing inside of the mama go garage oh yes it worked let's go oh wow yeah all right this was a very very good beluga skip so what happens now is i leave i completely take my hand off of the controller and it pushes us out into a an exit extra exit that would normally happen in the Mama Go garage if you were to unlock it. So it pushes us into Hillus and then back into Mama Go's garage. So when we go back into that little area where we are now in the Beluga. That skip can take you, uh, We've I've gotten lucky enough to have it on my first try to upwards of 10 minutes. So getting it that early was really good. Yeah, that saves a bunch of time. So right here we're going into Black Isle, which is where you would normally be going into the game if you didn't have to do the Beluga skip. Uh, so now... We are going to be doing another skip. So that's Mr. DeCastlec, the guy that um, wanted to talk to us beforehand. But uh, he has this dialogue box that takes about a good minute and a half. If I do this correctly, I just skipped past that dialogue box that took about a minute and a half. And we're going to run all the way over here and stand on the arrows here. Nice, and, nice, nice. and we're going to have... Uh, we're going to have Paige go over here and stand on the other arrow so we can get through. We'll find him, his earthworms. All right, so we're going to go up here, and Paige wants to talk to us. He's going to say, I have a surprise for you. So we're going to stand right here, and we're going to talk to him really fast. And this will allow for us to talk to him even faster than, than 
he would normally want to attack uh talk to us time to show you my latest invention two years of work under the utmost secrecy the outcome of a life's work my little marvel the jet boots so this is this uh this these jet boots that are right here um are very important throughout the game we're going to be using them quite a lot throughout the run we're gonna um so normally when you're playing playing this casually this is the first uh introduction that you get for a new way of uh running the game uh not running the game but uh getting higher places and that slam down right there in casual play you would see those moving up and down that would give you a hint as to where you have to go so that's where we're going to be going next. If you stand, if if Jade stands on one of these sides, while he, oops, I messed it up. There we go. While Jade is on the other side, it will knock you up to the top of here. We're going to be using that to our advantage for other stuff as well. So unfortunately, we do have to let Paige up here with us. And then we are going to... Run over here. And hit that into there. That's that's one of the super action things again. And we're going to hit this. Get these uh, De Niro. And uh, I found out recently that uh, on the PC version of this game, that actually cannot be skipped. So we're going to run all the way back to the back back here and make sure we do it fast enough to get to get Paige to uh, use a super action right there, because if we're too late, if we're too late in uh, having him do the super action, he'll have us run all the way over to that grate that's over to the right, and we'll have to do a cutscene uh, and wait for him. Now we do our one attack right there with our uh, attack, attack, break attack, and then we'll have Paige help us push this over. Yeah, throughout most of this game, you'll have a companion with your side, uh, uh, alongside you, and you wanna, we want, uh, wanna a lot, large part of this run is making sure that the AI of the, uh, of your companion doesn't break. So we, we sometimes position ourselves in such a way, or we move back and forth to make sure that the AI doesn't break, because it, it can lose runs, uh, like really badly. Um, I've lost two minutes, two or three minutes of, just Paige not wanting to do it anything. He just stands there looking at you, looking around. Alright, so right here in this section, you know, you're know you going to learn about all a bunch of different uh, creatures like jellyfish and stuff like that. However, all we want to do is we want to go after these crochacks right here. These crochacks are one of the only important things that we want to go after here because then we can go after these jellies up here and while we're attacking the jellies, what we're going to try and do is we're going to step on this. This will activate uh, Paige to get a little bit closer to us. We can hit action, and we just skipped having to fight all of those enemies as well as a cutscene. And what is this weapon here? Oh, uh, yeah, he gets the Baranko D53, which allows him to I'll unlock rates and uh, also uh, uses it to punch enemies with. So we're going to call him over here, and we're going to stand in this spot specifically, because after he starts uh, getting rid of the great here, um, we freeze up. So after he's done going, we're just going to do a roll and then get through, jump up here, and we're going to go back in that area where we ran into those jellies once again. And as long as I don't get hit or he gets hit, then we're still golden for uh, our health. So up at the top, you'll see where it says eat two. Those are called Starkos. And we only have two hearts to start off with. He only has two hearts to start off with. If you get hurt, you want to eat those. But we are trying to save them for later because we're definitely going to be using them later on in the run. So now that we have the Baracko, we're going to go over here, have him use use it right here and we're gonna run over here and once he starts going we're gonna roll <laughs> this is the first case of jade becoming very uh impatient when it comes to stuff so there's another section coming up right here and what exactly are we gonna be doing coming up here voiceless 
Yeah, there's gonna be these crochaks, which is gonna which are gonna ambush us and uh, uh, make Paige stuck uh, in place because he's he's wrestling with this crochaks creature. So you want to kill all of them except for the last one, which is uh, which will be struggling with uh, Paige. Uh, after we we kill all of them, we want to get that last one, hit it once, then uh, it'll start following us instead, and then we can make sure Paige uh, uh, hits the switch. And once he hits the switch. Uh, we can go up, uh, do some stuff here and there, and then we'll basically skip a cutscene because uh, we don't have to. We didn't kill the last crow check technically because he'll despawn. So right here, we're gonna just attack it once to aggro it onto me. It's gonna follow me all the way over to here. Then we have him use his super action. He'll attack that, then hop me right up to here. And this will cause us to completely skip a cutscene. It's a very short that he won't follow us into here. Then we're going to have him use his action to open up this door for us. And we're going to stand on this side. And this time we're going to roll this way. Which then in turn will put us into our next part of the level. And we're going to go into another skip, which we call bridge skip. Yeah, and in bridge skip, we'll be going out of bounds. And out of bounds is kind of dangerous in this game, because if you fall uh, uh, off of uh, the floor, which is very easy to do in out of bounds, you will be falling endlessly. And there is no way to leave to leave that except for exiting to the main menu. And if you exit to main menu, you'll lose the run because you didn't make any saves. So we want to make sure we don't fall out of bounds. So I'm going to be standing in this spot specifically, or around this spot, looking up around right there, and if I get this correctly, this can be really fidgety. If I get this correctly, I'm going to uh, fall off of that near that wooden area over to my right-hand side there and fall out of bounds. And this skips having to go for like 10 or 20 different like cutscenes and doing a little bit inside of the game. Come on, please. I did so good earlier with this. There we go. So we fell out of bounds. And now we're going to run this way. Follow this path over this way. And fall down once again. Go through the rock. And the second that Jay goes through the rock, we're going to look up and take a picture of the left creature. This will publish what we need. And the unfortunate thing about those two creatures is that it actually isn't two creatures it's actually one and here is our boy right here so this is our next boss that we are going to be uh we're going to be taking a picture of to get some money then we're going to have Paige go over and, he, and he's going to slam on top of it. We're going to hit it three times. Then we're going to run over to his spot and hope that the jellyfish jump right in front of us, which we got very lucky there. You can get lucky enough and completely get, all of, get rid of all of the jellyfish there if you go to the right spot. It's just a guessing game. It's never in the same spot for where those guys are going to spawn out. Then we're going to do it again, but this time we're going to get Crochax, so I'm just going to run away to hope that we're, that we're close to him. Come on. Jeez. There we go. And one more. Then after the after these crow checks, there we go. It's just easy the rest of the way. So go ahead and attack. One, two, three. We're just gonna try and attack him as much as we can here. And now it's gonna do this little blast breath air and we're just gonna run around in a circle because it can't reach us if we just run around in a circle here. Then it's gonna go back into the hole that it was in. And then this is where the importance comes in. We need to hit him as much as we can when he's coming out of the hole that he's in right here. 
doing that will allow for us to completely skip another one of the phases, which we did completely skip a phase where uh, he does the blast again. Alright, so that is the end of that boss, which means we get another pearl. <laughs> so I like, this is why everybody likes Paige so much, just his one-liners that we get off of him. And then we get our pearl. This will be technically our third, second or third one. Because we already had to buy, we already had to use up one. Okay, so what? So now after that, we go into another cutscene, and what exactly is going to be happening in this cutscene, Voiceless? So in this cutscene, we will meet Han, which is the uh, one of the uh, local leaders of the Iris Network, and uh, the Iris Network is this underground operation that is uh, is is like a whistleblower organization uh, against uh, the Alpha sections, which are these, uh, according to them, oppressors of the people. And uh, they want to shed some light onto how they're actually not helping people, but maybe even working with the Doms. Uh, but uh, he'll explain that in a bit more detail. But this is a pretty long cutscene. It's like a two and a half minute long cutscene or something, or like two yeah. fifteen. But one thing that's really weird is uh, the the he has this weird mask car. It, 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 it makes no sense. Why, why? What are the logistics of this? <laughs> it's so crazy. He just tells you to hop into his cab, yet yet he has this huge limousine like car around it. Like what the hell? So uh one of the funny one of the funny things about this uh is there's great voice acting throughout almost the entire game, but some of these cutscenes are just terrible. And there's sometimes like really long. <laughs> And the next one she says is also pretty bad. Exactly what you believe them to be. They capture I just think the voice acting is terrible at some points, but it makes it also great. They take care of the wounded, push back the Dom's attacks. That's exactly how they clown your suspicions and gain your confidence. They suck the life blood out of our planet exactly as they've done to hundreds of others. The All right, didn't have the time to so we're almost done with this cutscene, unfortunately, uh, I should say. And he tells us to meet us in this Akuta bar, where he, uh, where the Iris Den is, uh, or Iris Network is supposed to be located, and we can maybe see for ourselves if we want to help them out or not. Peepers, he talks. He talks about Peepers and Peepers. You'll meet him in a little bit. He is actually my favorite character in the entire game. We are free to choose your side, Jade. Did you say Peepers? Safe and sound in its shell, the precious pearl is the slave of the currents. Remember the password. Safe and sound in its shell, the precious pearl. As you might notice, this game has some themes of propaganda and oppression, and I think it's it's uh, it, it's a very a very strong story. Uh, especially uh, if you look back to it later, uh, when you're when you're a bit older. So when I play, was playing this when I was younger, I didn't really uh, care much for the subtle themes. All right, and now that we're done in Black Isle, we're just gonna leave and head out of here. Let's go see just exactly what's. And normally, what you would be doing is you would go into be going to the pedestrian district. But since we have ourselves a beluga right here, we're actually going to be going into a section you wouldn't be going to until a lot later in the game, and that's the top of the volcano, which is right up here. And the reason we're doing this is to grab up quite a bit of pearls that we're uh, that we're going to need. Yeah, getting the beluga early with the beluga skip is fantastic. It, it allows for such a different route. So the first thing you're going to notice is there is a very strange man talking and doing dialogue here. Uh, technically, at this point, Paige is not in your party. And we get this guy by the name of Double H. Uh, we'll be learning about him in a little bit. And Paige is just not supposed to be here at this point. So we get Double H's dialogue instead. Don't break up the team. He does have really good lines, though. 
H-D-B-U-T-T. Don't break up. Yeah, and fortunately as well, because normally you'd be having double H here as your companion, uh, but he, at least for what I did runs, uh, he is a I used to break on me here, and it caused me to sometimes be stuck uh, uh, until I had to load a save, uh, which I didn't make any because it's a it's a single segment run, right? So you're probably wondering why I'm running away from these pearls. We actually have to jump back here multiple times just to uh, to get out of this area. So I'm just going to leave those pearls until I come back. So once again, we're going to run back over this way and there's going to be two more Crochaks that come after us. So one thing you're noticing is I'm waiting for one of the Crochaks to start attacking me and their face will turn red. Those are the ones you want to go after first because uh, those are the ones that are about to attack you. So I picked up that one pearl because that was the one that I attacked before I went and dropped down the uh, bridge. But, uh, okay, come on, Jane. And we're still going to miss out on those, but we're going to go over here and we're just going to get through these. Because the tentacles that are on these things right here actually can hurt you quite a bit. And now we're going to fight some more Crochaks. So that means I'm getting the left one next. Then we're going to get that one. Okay. Maybe not. There we go. And finally, that one. That was weird camera angle. There, I couldn't do anything about that. Yeah, the camera tends to sometimes uh, lock yourself in a position that could really screw you over if you're not prepared for it. If we get out of this alive, we can buy the stellar motor. So then we're going to get upright. So we're going to pick up all five. Mac. And while we're heading back, we're going to pick up the pearls at the same time. I am lost. Where am I? There we go. So we got those five pearls. We have these four, and then we're going to have another three up here. There we go, and now we are officially done with the volcano and we never have to go back to this area. All right. Let's make sure that Paige is there, okay. But the problem is, is we want to make sure that he's following us because like we said before, Paige's uh, AI just tends to shut down sometimes. So as long as we look at him, he should uh, follow us. At least in this situation, yeah. Yeah, in this situation, correct. And we're heading out of this volcano here. So now we'll be heading to the pedestrian district where we should be finding the Iris Network and seeing what they have to tell us about uh, what, they, what they think about these operations the Alpha Sections are doing that's so evil. All right, so this is where we normally be going after Black Isle. And when we go into the main canal here, we're actually going to be going into our, um, we're going to be going into first person view because I just find it a little bit easier to go into first person mode when we're in the pedestrian district. Gets me there faster. And now after this, um, it's going to take us into a very wide camera angle just to show off the town here. You can control uh, Jade as you're doing it. So you, as long as you know where you're going, you can just roll over there. And now we're coming into a section right here. Uh, can you explain some of the um, codes? Ah, yeah. So uh, throughout the game, we'll be collecting these codes. And these codes are important for uh, opening doors, for example, or, or going to secret areas. Uh, now, these codes are always randomly generated. Um, uh, they're always a letter, a number, a letter, and another number. Uh, now, even if you can predict these codes, let's say use some advanced tool or something, uh, you actually cannot open gates unless you have received the code, either by email or through uh, like these little tickets that we're about to get here as well. Uh, this, uh, this, this code, the first code here is an exception to that rule, though. Okay, so we want everybody. We're going to be getting another code here. We want everybody to guess what what you think the code is going to be. Sorry, Rufus. I 
may seem a little pushy, but Hillis needs this more than you do. It can also repeat. Yeah, that the numbers mostly, yeah. Number letter, number letter. All the way around, right? Letter, number, letter. Huh? Number. Letter, number, letter. Number, letter, number, letter, number, letter, letter yep. There's a beautiful old locker. N5T... N5T9. <laughs> it's not 420, it can't be 420. What was that? No, somebody said 420 in the chat. It can't be 420 because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So we're going to have plenty of those coming uh, coming into the um, upcoming gameplay. So you'll have plenty of times to try and guess. So now we go to another cutscene, and this is an important cutscene. What exactly is happening in this one, Voiceless? Friends, allow me to introduce you to Jay. Uh, sorry, I was just laughing at the numbers in the chat. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, this cutscene. Uh, I, I think I think we should let the the dialogue explain uh, what, what's going on because there's okay. some good dialogue here. Yeah, with peepers especially. Oh yeah, especially with my friend peepers here. They operate all over the universe for more than thirteen different systems. You already know peepers. It was his idea to offer you the job. He knew you would complete the test. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time because he just comes in randomly and only has very few lines. Now listen up, Jade. The events are gaining momentum. Adam's bomb has exploded in the canal. Obviously, the alpha sections have sealed off the sector. They've embarked everyone there. To take care of them, right? No hospital has received any victims, Jade. The governor of Hillis contacted us as soon as she heard the news. She's willing to help us, but her HQ is under surveillance. You could help us to save these people, Jade. Nino, give us a brief on the situation. Here's what we know. The victims are kidnapped by Alpha Section agents. They are then taken to the Neutrophils factory. Shuttles are then used to take them to the old slaughterhouses. And from there, they are loaded into military cruisers headed for the moon. We don't know what they're forced to suffer. None of our agents have ever returned from these cursed places. Four days ago, we lost contact with Double H in the Neutropils factory. He was our best agent. And friend. Double H was supposed to have a <laughs> back proof of the Dom's traffic. His last photos are terrifying. A spirit eater. We need someone to take over the mission, Jade. You can refuse. Continue. We need proof. One, you get inside the Neutropils factory. Two, you take pictures of the Alpha sections and their victims. You'll be in constant contact with May. She'll be like who's exactly telling the truth in all this? People must know. All right. So now that you know the basically the story and premise of what's going on in this story, um, we we've gotten a city pass. This will allow for us to do quite a few things uh, throughout this run in a normal setting. I think a couple of things in the fast one. It's only for the shop, actually, in uh, Ming Tzu that we need it. In any percent, that is. In uh, in in hundred percent, we need it for a lot more things. All right. So now, as quickly as we've gone into the Akuta Bar to talk to Peepers and the Iris Network, we're going to be leaving as well. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention when I first got into the Akuta Bar while I was having uh, while I was having voiceless uh explain about the the codes is i took a picture of that goat that was uh the bartender there i'm doing that only for safety purposes because later on we're going to be taking a shopping spree and for some reason recently i have not had enough money in order to get what we need so that's just for a safety backup So now that we've done that, you're gonna say, "Hey, your next area is just over to the left. Why do you need Why do you need the beluga?" Well, we're gonna be using it obviously for for faster movement, as well as later on, um, the path is gonna be blocked off by a couple of things for us to actually be able to get out of here. And we're not gonna be upgrading the um, the hovercraft. All right, yeah. everybody, make your second guess for nope. the code. We need our second guess. Yeah, so uh, throughout this game as well, we'll be taking pictures of these little barcodes, and uh, if, if we ha provide enough evidence, uh, the, Hill the Iris Network will send us a code through email, and we'll wait for X amount of bleeps on the bottom right for 
for the right email to appear. Uh, and then once we open that, we'll immediately get the code. Because if you open it too early, we'll have to read all these old emails that are not uh, important. All right. So we got that. And we're going to go into here. And this is another form of... Uh, there's another form of... Um, impatience that we get from from jade here that i always like to do uh we have him start his action and then we just do our action right here which makes it seem like jade is very impatient with Paige uh, trying to open up the fence okay we're gonna have to keep on our toes. all right we're gonna run through here and we have to jump over these red lasers because oops well that was Stupid on my part, but okay. Then we're gonna push that. We're gonna run back and hopefully we need we need Paige to uh, do that dialogue box, otherwise he will not show up. Yeah, this game has a lot of quotable dialogue, uh, especially if you have to watch the cutscenes every single run. <laughs> One of my favorite lines comes up later on on, on a boss and here later on. Oh, and yeah. we're going to push it again here. We're going to push this enough until it shows a top-down view, because then I can let go of it to get up the box faster. Climb up, then jump over. So this is the first version of us seeing the Spirit Reaper and what exactly he can do. They're seeking something on us that can do all of this to try and stop us. They're seeking a reaper on us. Looks like he's on the prowl. He must keep an eye on the ducks. It's getting too risky, Jade. We're needed so, back at the White House. We're gonna Let's run over to the game. our closest door that we can actually open. And yes, you might be freaking out that I only have one health here. Um, I'm hoping to stay on one health uh, coming up, but unfortunately we're going into probably one of the stupidest fights in the entire thing. It's not even a boss, it's just a, a small section here. It's the service elevator fight here. These little guys are robotic, and they like to lock onto you like that. If they turn red, you know they're coming after you, but they can come from any direction, and they're so super quick so like like that i was facing backwards there was n absolutely nothing i could do so once again we have to do the same fight over again <laughs> this could happen quite a few times yeah this fight is quite tough sometimes even when you think it's not going to hit you it, it just suddenly speeds up it seems and it just hits you straight away we're gonna try it this way There we go, that should be it. Or not. There it is. There we go, that was the last one. Second try, not bad. Yeah, if one gets stuck in, in like little, this, little, uh, this little cranny, then you uh, have to wait until it shows itself again. Yeah, so, like I said, sometimes they'll just drop from the... Uh, from the roof and you just can't do anything about it all right we're gonna leave uncle page down there for a little bit nothing to worry about you'll be fine so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna learn about a new enemy we can't get past that laser so what we have to do is we run, have to run a bound hit it three times and then hit him into the laser then we're all set we can go through, and then we are going into this section where we are finally going to meet a new character of the game. And you know the character that we were... You know the character that we were talking about earlier, Double H talking? Well, he, this is Double H, and he's getting a little bit of life force sucked out of him. So we have to take a picture of him. This is one of the main pictures that we have to take, and then we're going to be doing another code if somebody wants to try and guess what the code is going to be. It's a little crooked that they want you to take a picture even though he's suffering before the, you let him go in here. Yeah. X for It should work. Be careful. 
Oh, what was it? H5. What was it? Sometimes this can happen. Uh, what was it? What was the code? H5. Uh, <laughs> X5. H6. You can check your email to find out again if you want. This happens to uh, me all the time. I, I say a code and then I immediately forget it. How do you how do you check email? There we go. Uh, email. Inventory. Uh, H5H5. H5, X5H5. What was that glitch with her mouth? There we go. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Haven't had that happen in a while. So the next item we're going to be picking up right here is the glove, is our um, disc launcher. And we're going to be using this quite a bit throughout the uh, throughout the game. We're going to be turning around and using it right away, actually. We're going to uh, throw three discs right there to get rid of it. And he, a double H is going to drop down. And he, some of it, we're going to try and listen in a little bit on his dialogue because it's pretty funny, this whole conversation that they have. Oh, uh, you all right? Turn my brain to jelly. Oh. Are, are you our contact? Are you double H? Not, not sure. Does the iris mean anything to you? So because his brain is basically being turned to mush, got turned to mush, he can't under he can't com comprehend a lot of the stuff. Here's one of my favorite lines. Of some assistance there. So you are double H. Double H, triple Z, oh, whatever pleases you, don't ask me. All I know is that in another ten minutes, I was a goner. So right here, after this dialogue is done, what we're going to do is we're going to look to the, we're going to look to the right, because his special power is actually able to go through that, so we're going to use his action, and we're going to try and, and pick up the pearl at the same time. If I did that correctly, we should have the dialogue for picking up the pearl right after that which we did then we're going to run in here and we're going to be very careful because i have had a chance to where i've actually soft locked the game here by falling out of bounds it does absolutely nothing to help us out and then after this we are going to be going into our next boss and what exactly are we going to be trying to do in this next boss voiceless well as you may have seen before uh in the in a picture uh the reaper is uh, gonna be sick on us and uh, he, um, uh, we have a quick way of fighting him, and it's quite a tough fight, I'd say. Uh, but you want to basically uh, uh, hit him once with a melee attack, then afterwards immediately hit him again with uh, with a uh, gyro disc that we just unlocked. Uh, uh, this will immediately skip a cycle where he normally would jump up and then shoot these little uh, lasers at you, but instead he'll just jump to the next uh, floor, uh, so we can just hit him again and do the same, uh, do it a couple cycles until he's uh, dead. Oh, the disc wouldn't come out. That's fine. So we're going to throw it up there while he's waiting right there. We're going to run back again. We're going to throw a disc right there at him. Oh, crap. Okay. We're off cycle now because it wouldn't shoot the gyro disc. Also in this game, uh, uh, we have a tendency of taking pictures and when our companions are in dangerous situations like Double H just now, we took a picture of him in the machine and the PG. There we go. Uh, now we're on cycle. By the Reaper. So this is what we wanted to happen the entire time. We're gonna attack him, shoot a laser or a gyro disc at him. So that means this is not, since he jumped up here, this is actually his last phase when he's jumping around a lot like this. This is his last phase. We're gonna run back over this way and stand about right here. This will allow for us to hit him off the ladder right away and he'll fall into the water. And we will actually be getting, we uh, the pearl will pop out of the water. All right. Now that that boss is over, we actually have to take damage, unfortunately, because we're going to be using it for a trick later on. So I'm going to just run over here and I'm going to get hurt really quick. And then we're going to run back. Also, I like how Jay just made a, a casual cannibalism joke about her uncle. <laughs> exactly. Uh, 
Uh, all right, we're gonna dodge all of our electricity there. We're gonna hit hit the rat off and then zoom that around camera, please. Then we're gonna go around and we're gonna run after this key that's all the way over here. Grab the key, which actually happens to be our next enemy that we have to run in that we'll learn about. We're gonna step backwards over here. Then we're gonna have him do a slam. Then we're gonna hopefully no. Nope, okay, we're gonna do it again. We want to get it into the electricity right there, and we have to remember where the key landed for the sole purpose of we're actually going to be duplicating this key. So we're going to jump back over here to try and open up the elevator door. But, uh, oh, well, that sucks because I accidentally healed myself. There's one. And then die again. So now doing this, I'm going to go pick up the key once again that's not even there anymore. We're going to go in here and we're going to pick up our first health upgrade, which is the PA-1, and then we're going to give this to Paige. Doing so will allow for us to have Paige go and hit that triangle key for us, and we're going to run around to the back and grab the fuse. Let's go. So I accidentally grabbed it a little bit too early. That's fine. I can usually time that, but that was fortunate. That's not that big of an issue. Then we're going to come around this way and we're going to be very careful not to go too far because you can activate the fight once again. So now that we did that and got both of our uh, both of our fuses, we're going to run back up the stairs. And when we run up these stairs, we're actually going to be taking everything off of... Uh, off of Paige's possession. So he's not going to need this Starkos, this Starkos, this key. We're just going to leave the M-Disc and the Jet Boots on him. And let's see if I can get a dialogue glitch coming up right here. There's a couple of glitches that can that can actually happen here. Let's go. We'll see if we get the first one right here. Yeah, there's one where oh. you uh, enter the loading zone as the cutscene starts, and then the whole for the whole game pages animations are broken, and it looks really funny. Uh, the first, the other glitch that I found is you can actually uh, duplicate the dialogue that's right here, so the dialogue will actually play twice here instead of once. Let's roll over here. I'm not gonna get the other glitch. There's one more glitch that can happen here. If I was fast enough, it might have happened. So as Paige was saying earlier, uh, we should be careful. Oh, we got it. Oh, so nice. normally, normally Paige is supposed to be standing in front of the machine talking about it, but because I went over so fast, Paige is just standing in the corner talking to, uh, to absolutely nothing. Now, what were you going to say? Yeah, so Paige has been warning us about uh, this being rather risky and dangerous, and that we're kind of needed at the uh, lighthouse. And uh, his worry is uh, is quite is quite valid because uh, there's something going to happen uh, shortly above this elevator here. So I'm going to hit the switch a couple of times because Paige takes way too long to get into the elevator and. It won't start lifting up until he's centered on the into the middle of the elevator. And when we get into this next, this up to the top of this next elevator, Paige is going to uh, try and give us an M disc, and those M discs are usually missions. But since we're not going to be looking at the M disc, the div M disc is actually an M disc explaining about how much he loves uh, taking care of her and how brave and how proud he is of her. Um, it's a great thing to watch when you play this casually. Yeah, it also details that he works on the Beluga in secret, even though uh, that's already been revealed to us because we skipped getting that earlier. So now we're going into another fight where we have to fight the Dom Sarcophagi again. This time we are going to use our blaster right here and we're going to try and kill as many as we can just by doing this. Here's our last one. And we're done fighting. So we're gonna jump up here. 
and then we're going to go in here, and we're going to go to the very end of this little tiny section right here into the white tube. I'll roll into it and then roll right back out, and this will activate a cutscene, and I want everyone in chat right now to put an F, to put Fs in chat for Paige, because we're losing Paige right now, unfortunately. When you're playing this game, when you're playing this game casually, this is a very, very upsetting and sad moment because you're, you're stuck with them for so long and you and you build up the relationship with them. And then you watch the Amdesk afterwards and then uh, it's really sad. Because they placed that uh, uh, little machine there right after. All right. So what we're going to be doing here is normally you have to push this all the way up to the front and, and use your M disc to uh, to uh, shoot the lever that's on the other side. However, you can get a little bit farther away from it, and you if you aim it correctly, you can hit the switch through the wall. There's quite a few of those actually throughout the game. Uh, we're going to be using that to our advantage, really good advantage later on in. Yeah, there's a lot of broken hitbox in this game where you can just slightly, uh, if, if you know where to shoot, you can just shoot through walls. So I made a save point here just in case uh, Double H didn't show up here. He has not showed up here before. And if that happens, then the game soft locks because you can't continue on. You need Double H in order to finish off this section. This is a, a very um, different sort of stealth section. Can you kind of explain some of the aspects of this? Yeah, so the stealth sections game uh, uh, have some varying, varying degrees of difficulty because some at some parts of the game the guards will have a, like it seems like an increased range of vision and sometimes they're completely deaf and won't hear you at all and other times you can you can just make the slightest noise and you'll get caught. So we want to kind of know what is what is the most optimum movement here and just execute that as perfectly as possible. Now in any percent no major skips we have a section uh, uh, in the slaughterhouse that's uh, really uh, has a lot of a lot of these stealth sections and they're uh, quite difficult as well uh, so if you're ever interested in that you can watch the any percent no major skips to see the slaughterhouse so you see um if you run they're able to hear you most of the time and they will gather they will get the attention you'll uh, get their attention and they'll look towards you however um you you saw me rolling and kind of running in some sections but if you just roll without using your run, this will allow for you to um, not make any noise. So what I did right there is I had to look at I had to look at Double H the entire time because uh, if you don't look at him while you're hitting the button, he just won't hit the button for you. There we go. That's one of the harder little sections to do there. So now we're going to roll into here and hopefully not get caught. Yeah, sometimes even if you get seen a little bit, the guards only enter into like a slight alert state. They don't go on full alert and then you can kind of uh, uh, still m make it through without getting spotted. So I'm going to go about right there and then I'm just going to roll all the way. He won't see me. And we're going to take our first mandatory picture inside of this section. If you do not take uh, these two uh, pictures that I'm, uh, that I'm taking right there, they will not allow for you to continue on through the game to the next part of this uh, level. Yeah, this is part of the evidence that they require for you for your report, which shows that the, the alpha sections are doing human trafficking, which is, uh, well, not allowed. All right, and I'm going to run here because we're going to, we have our triangle. We have our triangle key here, and we're going to go in here, and we're going to find Paige's jet boots. Now, normally when you're playing in the no major skips or the, um, or 100%, 
you would have to look at the bottom of that code and you have to remember that code for what is it an hour and a half yeah uh you need to enter these into the terminal in the lighthouse uh and you need to just remember this code and i used to just write it down somewhere on paper uh but uh, if you if you don't remember that code uh, you just need to open a menu and it takes long all right so coming up is probably one of my uh worst tricks in the entire game and that is the laser skip this is the skip that i practice every single time when i'm playing the game ah i tried it sometimes you can you sometimes you can uh get around him really fast but i think i stood up and i and it screwed it up but that's fine we'll wait one death isn't that bad especially right here So we're going to wait for him to turn back around here. And then roll up here. And then we have one more little section right here as long as they don't see me. Come on, dude. And these stealth sections uh, were quite difficult, I believe, and when I did my casual run uh, a long time ago. But uh, uh seeing like in the run, doing these quick strats uh, really uh, is something else. I like it a lot. Oh yeah, this is a very difficult to... section done normally. So oh, we're yeah. going to follow that box until we get it past that, then we're just going to walk over here casually and stand up. Doing that, we can just jump up here and they just never see you standing right next to him. So we're going to drop down here and go through. Now here we come to laser skip. Uh, we have to get our second set of, of, um, information. And then we're going to make a safety save here for the sole purpose of, I, if you manage to go out of, if you fail this trick, you will end up, uh, falling out of bounds and you can't do anything. And since if you play it normally, you don't. You just don't make saves at all, so this would ruin it. But if you were to do it here, you would just all you would do is you would fall out of bounds and have to retake the picture again. So what I'm doing is I'm putting one foot on the regular ground and the other foot on the conveyor belt, so this box will push me. And when I get about 60% of the way th into the wall with, with Jade, I'm going to roll. Then I'm going to run out of bounds, then roll here. This will allow for me to be out of bounds. I'm glad I got this first try. Go over here. And then we're going to distract this guy by throwing that over there. And then we're going to run over this way and hopefully get this. I was struggling with this earlier for some reason. There we go. We're good. That was a good section. Yeah, that was really good. Oh, you're you're not. Oh, okay. No, I'm not really hungry right now. All right, so now we're done with the hard section and most of the hard skips in the game. Now we go on to probably one of the most fun bosses. Oh, we also want everybody to make your predictions for the next code. We have another code coming up. Make your predictions right now. So this is the this is the code that they wouldn't give you unless you have both of the uh, both of the uh, pictures that you needed. K six S nine K six S nine K six S nine. We've reached. I think we've got it. S nine. There we go. Some of these codes are great. Just to let you guys know. All right, so now we're going to go this way, and we're going to be going into a pretty long cutscene here. Um, but the boss afterwards, the boss lead-up is actually longer than the boss itself. So what's actually happening right here, Voiceless? Uh, yeah, so this boss, uh, normally you'd have to punch its legs down, and after you do that a couple of times, 
uh, your ally will come in and you'll use use him together to punch his legs down. Afterwards, the boss falls down and this grate opens up and then you can shoot it with your gyro disc. But uh, thanks to bad collision, we can just shoot through the grate altogether and never have to punch his legs down at all. When I was younger, the face on this guy was very, very freaky. It kind of scared me. And I had trouble with this boss when I was younger, too. I, When I first played the game, the story behind it is I... On the PlayStation 2, when I played it on the PlayStation 2, they had a they had a picture of Jade on the cover holding a camera, and because I was so obsessed with uh, picture games like Pokemon Snap, I just thought that the game was about taking pictures in the game, so I just wanted to play it for that. But after I found out about that, I just decided I, I found out that this game is much more than that. So we, we saw the eye, that eye shoot out, that pearl shoot out. And now it's going to select all of these portions that it wants to make itself into. And here we go. Here is our boss. What we're, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run over and we are going to attack the leg once and only once. Step back. It's going to do nothing for us. And then he here comes Double H. And here's my favorite line in the entire game. Because he's so serious, he just all of a sudden says that. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand about right here. We're going to pull out our... our uh, M launcher and we're just going to shoot through the grate right here. This will allow for us to kill the boss much faster than we normally would. And the boss is done. Like I yeah, said, the... what was that? It's such a quick fight. Yeah, it's 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 such a lead up to this massive boss and you can just kill it like that. All right, and now that now that that is done, we now have to try and go after Paige because he's, as we found out earlier on, is heading off to the moon. Uh, so far, it's just the slaughterhouse, uh, but yeah, we find out later that it's the moon as well. Uh, because uh, coming right up, there's a bunch of cutscenes explaining this. Uh, that they want us to go to the slaughterhouse, but we'll actually be skipping the slaughterhouse altogether because uh, we will have enough pearls to immediately go to the moon uh, because we have the beluga already. But if you are interested in seeing the slaughterhouse section, there is any percent no major skips where we do have to do the slaughterhouse dungeon as well. And there's a lot of great crazy glitches and out of bounds there that uh, and some super sick movement. So if you're interested in that, definitely watch that as well. And if you're interested in running this game, please do so. It's a great community. We're all very helpful and it's a very fun run once you get the run down and you know what you're doing. Because when you first play through this game, I'll admit I was very confused as to where I had to go and what I had to do and it had some difficulty peaks to it. But after playing it enough, you get used to it. So let's Let's hope that we get the really good... There's a glitch coming up where Paige's dialogue box can just show up out of nowhere coming up up here. So let's hope that that happens up here. And another little, very small trick coming up right here. Let's see if we get clippy. We did not, unfortunately. So you can save like half a second and you can clip through the wall right there. Now Paige can show up in two different spots here. Let, the first spot is right here. He did not show up there, unfortunately. And there's one more spot when they're both walking in this section. Don't ask me. That's unfortunate. We're not going to get Paige to show up. 
looks like you're finally getting your so the only the only dialogue that shows up for Paige to talk there is he says hey look Paige or look Jade there's a pearl down there and that's all he says Yeah, another thing about the community, there's still a bunch of glitches that need to be found, and there's a bunch of uh, bunch of cool glitches that that we currently have found and that are just very fun to see, but not actually don't add, add anything to the run. So if you're interested in that, uh, in doing some glitch hunting, there's plenty of opportunities for that still in this game. All right, so now that we have our second fuse in, we're able to leave this area, but we have to go and grab the pearl. But before we grab it, the pearl, something else happens to Double H. Double H. Miss Jade. Oh, this thing is eating up my insides. I oh, I can't hold out much longer. The voice from So from being in this machine, it seems that there is something implanted in Double H and it's making him like corrupt here. And uh he needs to he needs to use his breathing apparatus to uh, stay alive. Uh, so, uh... Let's make sure that it gets through here. Oh, come on. Come on, don't do this. Don't do this. Come on. There we go. We're good. Let's go. So he can... That's why we turn around to make sure that he's coming, because he... Once again, his AI... Their AI can just be very, very dumb. Sometimes. What we're hoping for him to do is to not jump not do two jumps but to jump right into the vehicle and unfortunately he did a double jump that's fine then we're gonna go over here go in here and before we leave this place we're gonna go into the elevator room where the pearl was located and we're once we go into here we're just gonna turn right back around and leave because this pearl will follow us to get into here and now we're heading back into the factory entrance then we'll take ourselves a a right and get ourselves out of here So now we have the beluga. This is one re another reason why we have the beluga. As you can see, there are little uh, mines there. We would have hit those otherwise. Then we can go in here and back to the iris network where we were. Maneuver not allowed. Collision risk high. And the iris, obviously, we just have to uh, run down to the Akuta bar where the iris was originally located. And that's the funny thing that we always like to point out. He says, I, I can't see a thing. Where are you, Miss Jade? You can just leave him back there, not be next to him, and he'll just appear inside of the Akuta bar without you having to worry about him. All right. So now we're going into this next section, and there's a little bit of a uh something that happens right here uh what's happening here voiceless so uh yeah they're gonna uh, uh first of all save double h because he's in dire need of assistance um and uh, well i i think uh we can let this guts explain itself as well so seeing this thing on on Double H's neck gives her a flashback of the things that we, she's been seeing throughout the entire run. And then, as they said, this is the last of their serum, which could, which could indicate that, um, if something else like this were to happen again, they wouldn't be able to heal it. Thanks to you, Jade, I'll be safe. I just... So now after doing this dangerous mission, the... Sorry, I had to hear peepers. Uh, now that we know... Uh, now that the city knows about... about Jade and what she's done, they've teamed up and given us a bunch of pearls. And if I've done everything correctly, we'll be leaving this place with, um... We should be leaving this place with about 25 different 
pearls. Let's see here. Yep, we should be good. So that means we are on track to be able to finish off the game correctly. Yeah, I should I should explain something about it. so right, uh we just got uh we we just got told to go to the slaughterhouse next, but we'll be skipping. W W T A O. We work together as one. Carlson and Peters, page eight twenty three. And then the face of this girl's got it. All right, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, uh, we, we got told to go to the slower house, but we'll be skipping that section. Oh, instead, we'll be going straight to the moon after this. Well, we first need to get a few more pearls, but uh, then we can get the space engine, which allows us to get to the moon. Uh, normally, that would be the last dungeon of the game, uh, but uh, now... Uh, um, now we just completely skip the slaughterhouse, and there would be a cutscene explaining uh, that people are taken to the moon, and then also the orphans from the lighthouse all the way at the beginning are also taken to the moon. But all of those cutscenes are skipped, uh, and we'll just have to learn all of that on the way to the moon. So this is this is our shopping spree that I was talking about at the very beginning of the game. Uh, I don't know if I have enough. I'm going to have to take a couple of pictures here. Yeah, I just have to take like one or two pictures here. That's fine. So we have Ming Su here. She has, she'll give us some. How much do I have? Now I just take a picture of him. We made sure that we knew exactly what we were doing when we had this happen before. It only, it only wastes like five seconds just having to take those pictures. Um, the only reason that that happens, we found out is because of all of the Crochex that I was hitting off of the um, off of the ledges, their uh, the the money that they were dropping off the ground, I just could not pick because I was killing them off of off of the area. So, what are the two? What is that second thing that I picked up uh, there? voiceless uh yeah so that uh, was the super attack which is an upgrade to our already uh, powerful uh, power attack which if you hold the left mouse button normally be a power attack and now if you have the super attack if you after you do a power attack and quickly spam the attack button multiple times in a row uh it'll um it'll shoot these little orbs uh, that are that are homing and uh, they'll be really useful to kill a bunch of enemies on the moon and uh, uh, in the final boss fight all right, this is we as you saw we have about 27 we have about 27 pearls and we're going into this section which is the alpha section undercover and this is actually the fastest way for us to uh, get there because we're going to be going from here and then heading over to Mamago's garage. Yeah, these are the last pearls we'll be collecting. Yep, these are the last pearls we're going to be collecting because we need 30 to be able to get to the moon. So this is a really bad area because because uh, Double H just likes to get in the way unless I trapped him like I did there somehow. Oh. And then we're going to do one more here. Man, I somehow managed to trap Double H. I've never done that before. Yeah, yeah sometimes you get lucky and that happens. Oh, I killed the rat! I'm so sorry, everybody! <laughs> yeah, uh, killing that rat is uh, a hazard that happens sometimes. I just killed Double H. Well, that's what he deserves, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> killing like double H there is not the most optimal strategy. <laughs> uh, yeah, even normally damaging your uh, ally isn't doesn't always happen either. Like it's, I believe only the X amount of hits you do on them actually damages them. So it just happened to be that one hit. So that's unfortunate. Oh well. Respect the home team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. All right, now we should be safe. Come on at me. Uh, 
And we have one more. And maybe the rat will be safe this time. No, he's not. I'm sorry I killed him again. Oh, well. And now we're going to pick up our last three pearls that we need. And we're going to head over to Mama Go Garage. Mama Go Garage is the one who's going to be happy. Yeah, so thanks to Beluga Skip, we can skip all these upgrades that we usually would get with, with, with our pearls uh, and just immediately get the last upgrade and head for the moon because we have uh, all the other re uh, uh, requirements met, like uh, having double H, etc. Because you cannot do that with Page. I believe it crashes the game. That one I did not know. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go over here and we're just going to head right over to Mama Go's Garage. You will get to hear the, the awesome Mama Go Garage music once again. And maybe we'll get the page dialogue. Let's see. Yes, we got it. Ah, uh, yeah, the blue scorpion fish. <laughs> so that's the last time that we're going to be hearing his voice. And so we're going to run all the way to the back, skip past everything that we did here, and we're just going to pick up our blaster. And as you saw, there was like a 5, a 15, a 20, 25, and then there was the 30 that we have here. And that's all we need to do is get the 30. Funny thing about that dialogue of the scorpion fish, actually, even if you don't sequence break, sometimes when you're just riding around a hovercraft with double H, Paige will still yell, hey, Jade, a school of blue scorpion fish, even though yeah, he's, got... he's gone for ages. <laughs> I've gotten that. All right, off to the moon we go. So the very beginning of the moon is not that exciting. If you if you've ever seen uh, Super Mario Land six uh, hidden coins, this is where you can start singing the moon song. Even though it won't fit with the music at all, but <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna be doing something a little weird here. Normally you would. I'm going to be flying down this way for a really weird reason, because if you get close enough, it'll start pushing you up that way, and you'll be you'll spawn right in front of it instead of having to curve around into it, because you have a chance of hurting your ship when you're going into it, and you need all the health you can later coming up later on. All right. Here we go. We're going to be throwing a disc there, then we're going to be rolling over this way. Oops, where am I? And we're going to be throwing another disc right there. Hopefully I got it. Yep. And we're going to try and roll all the way over to the platform that we need, and I was stuck completely. That's fine. And we're going to send Double H over here. Come on, Double H. There we go. And uh, then we are going to be doing a little light puzzle. This light puzzle, if you play it casually, is was uh, kind of confusing, and it took quite a bit uh, before you were able to do it. Um, but there's faster ways of getting through it, obviously. The first thing we're going to do is pick this up. This is actually our pillar. It, it, it grows once you put it into the actual pedestal that it needs. But first we're going to turn this light here and we're going to put it to about right about there. We're going to go off and run over to this pillar. And the reason that we put it right there is once we put this pillar in, it's going to raise up, raise up, and we can move the lights all the way over to there, exit out, and then run and grab the next pillar. Like I said, this very beginning, there isn't a ton to talk about. It's just a lot of grabbing stuff and if you listen i noticed a couple of times back when i was playing this if you listen closely in the background if uh try not to get too spooked spooked too spooky uh, five me uh the the pigs are uh, you you can hear pigs and humans you can hear pigs squealing in the background in this area as well as other screams just goes to show how bad of a place this actually is. 
Yeah, I always thought they were alien screeches, but when you pointed that out that they're actually like, they sound more like pigs, it makes perfect sense because Paige is being captured here, right? We're gonna use our end discs here. Can I hit that or not? I'm just gonna move to be safe. Okay, hit it, please. There we go, okay. That was really bad. Now that our puzzle is solved, we have to run this way and finish it up. And head all the way over here this way. And as we get closer, trying to solve the puzzle, we will see something in between the middle of all this, and it just happens to be Paige. Paige has returned. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this. Oops. Action again. We're going to be going all the way around. This is where it was a little bit confusing when you are younger. You want to go all the way around. Grab these. Oops. I can't see with all the dialogue. There we go. Move it all the way around the outside edge here. We're going to skip this one because it already went to the next. Go here. Then we have one more to turn all the way around. But then we're going to run to this next one for the sole purpose of we're going to line up with that, so it hits that. Then we're going to move it to the center about right there and leave. This will then hit all the rest of of those. So we're going to turn around to make sure, okay, we have Double H's health. We do that for the sole purpose of we have, there is um, something that can happen to Double H. He can just completely despawn in this area. I don't know why. He's happened to, it's happened to me like two or three times. So let's see if I can do this pretty decent. Voiceless Voiceless has shown me a couple of better ways to do this. Oops. Well, not like that. <laughs> there we go. I still got him. That's fine. So I ate that uh, Starcoast there because we're actually just not going to need it. So it looks like we still had Double H's health after I was done with that fight. Uh, so we're going to run through here. And then we have a puzzle that we have to go to get our final picture that they want us to take while we're on the moon here. So what exactly is going to be happening here? Yeah, so we're going to run down all these elevators and afterwards take this picture. And this picture shows that the Doms are directly talking to the uh, captain of the Alpha section, which directly shows that they are clearly uh, working together as allies, uh, even though they're already, like, there is already evidence of that. But this is clear proof. Uh, but we'll, thanks to, thanks to uh, some, some, some proper positioning, we can... Uh, make a picture through the wall and uh, instead of walking all the way through to the window because if you would walk there you'd get a cutscene that's pretty long i believe i haven't watched it in a long time but it's it's like a 30 45 second cutscene that i just ah, yeah. skipped in there yeah and in that cutscene you can see a bunch of alpha sections uh, standing guard there and uh, these pods of people uh, like hundreds of people being captured and, and in the stuck in amber just like we saw page uh, uh, up above all right, so once we exit out of this little section, as long as we see Double H's health, that means that he's still in the game and we didn't despawn him somehow. So let's hope. If he did despawn, then we have a backup for it. Okay, we are good. We are saved, we have Double H, and we can finish up this run. All right. Now we get into the meat of the game here. There's going to be um, a lot of uh, fighting. Obviously, it's the end game, so there's going to be a lot of fighting coming up here. But there's... What was that? Okay. Now we get close enough, and we just have Double H uses special power. And we hit, we hit Paige out of the amber. But unfortunately, we find out that Paige is dead. So can we please get one more F in chat for Paige? 
If only we would have saved Paige immediately instead of first taking that picture. Yeah. Yeah, it's really sad. <laughs> this is this is a very sad moment when you're first playing the game to to see him dead like this. So there's nothing in Double H, who's been very talkative this entire time. He can't. He has nothing really to say. Seeing him dead like that. Oh. Uh, so all all we're gonna do here is we're going to run back into the cloister and just start heading back. And like we said, normally we would be going at this point. We would be going back. Uh, the way that we just did where we fought those enemies, but instead we decided to do that first before we free Paige. What were you going to say, Voiceless? Uh, nothing. Uh, it's coming up later. Oh, okay. <sighs> Unfortunately, the mission still has to go on, but we get a mission that says... So why is she calling him Chief anyway, Voiceless? Yeah, so uh, in one of the cutscenes, um, uh, uh, it is revealed to us that Paige is actually the Chief of the Iris Network, and that he is uh, he, fi he has found himself on the moon, and uh, that that's partially why we want to go to the moon. The other reason is there's this big transmitter that the Alpha Section uses to show all their propaganda, which we want to take over to, to show all the evidence that we've take, took, taken so far. But yeah, Paige is still alive. Paige is still alive, and it's because of what... Exactly as I found them. Stench and all. If it looks like the audio is off, it's because we did everything so out of order that it's trying to catch up. So watch Paige's head, or Jade's head here. It shakes right there, and then when it shows her hands, it also shakes. Just because we did everything out of order, I believe. I don't know why it does that. It's just funny to me. Page. The kids, they. Yes, I know. Kidnap too. Oh, there's some great music here too. <laughs> yeah, the music, the music just keeps getting better and better throughout this game. I actually haven't heard this music in a long time because uh, back in before Beluga skipped, the music used to cut out at this point, and all dialogue for the rest of the game was just silent. At least oh. the dialogue from Page, but no, that's not anymore thanks to Beluga skip. All right, we're going to move this way, and now we are on our first uh, chase sequence of of the end game. So first off here, um, you'll you'll see a double H and Paige complaining about being stuck inside of all this stuff for for days and weeks. However, uh, it seems like. Double H was stuck in his amber law, stuck in his machine longer than Paige was, so Paige really shouldn't complain. Yeah, he has nothing to complain about. <laughs> There's also another funny line coming up right here because Paige says, Hey, the Beluga, you managed to get it running, even though he was riding in it at the very beginning of the game. Yeah, sequence breaking uh, causes some funny dialogue. There we go. Go ahead and push that. I hardly had anything to do. So now we're, we're trying to get to the transmitter where we will see all the evidence being displayed. And it, there's going to be a big cutscene coming up where we display all this evidence that we've taken to the public. And there's going to be a revolt uh, uh, by the Hillian people. Uh, with uh, There's some great dialogue uh, coming up in that cutscene. But and it's now that you guys are part of the Hillian people, we are going to want you to also be revolting with them. I'll tell you when you'll be able to say. What we're going to need you to say is down with the alpha sections. We will tell you when that will happen. But the first thing that's going to happen here... Come on, Paige. The first thing that's going to happen in here is we have one more guess for the code. So everyone take your last guess for our last code that we have coming up here. Yes, Ha. 
All right, let's see if anybody gets it right. All right, so down here is our final picture that we have to take of the codes. One, Matt, some people have some creative two, codes. It's really funny. Three, four. Oh, we got N6D6. Anybody close? N6D6. Shawnee, quickly. If the population were... All right. That was our correct code. And here comes the longest cutscene in the entire game. So everybody sit back and relax. Transmitter alignment. Um, so, uh, coming up, they're obviously putting the pictures in to show all the Hill Hillians exactly what had happened, but, uh, at one point, when we hack into the system, there's gonna be a little bit of a break, and they're gonna say, uh, the Hillians are going to come in. I need everybody to, uh, start their typing for, for the words, down with the alpha sections to revolt, and I will tell you exactly when to hit it. Also, Sakuna is back. <laughs> yeah, you can say other stuff like uh, down with the alpha sections, revolts, yelling, arg, uh, emotes that, that will fit it. But uh, the main thing that they say is down with the alpha sections, so that will be coming up. He just hacks the voice system and everything. <laughs> Alright, not yet, not yet. I will tell you when. You will you will know when. Because there's a couple of other things that are coming up. So this is the thing that this is the whole um the the broadcast they've been hearing forever about the alpha sections and then our protective borders and infiltrated your city enough is enough amigos señores señoras y of course señoritas keep open your eyes we have these pictures here they want us to take, they're going to show us the pictures that I took throughout the game. The first one is going to be this pictures that you can barely see of Double H. This picture that you can kind of see. Then a picture of a wall. Then the game freaks out a little bit because there's supposed to be some pictures of the alpha sections. Yeah, normally you take those in a slaughterhouse. But then the next picture is going to be a wall. And once you see that wall, I need everybody to yell down with the alpha sections. Now, down with the alpha sections. Since the beginning, we have been manipulated and deceived. Stop listening to the lies that the alpha sections... Down with the alpha sections. Yes, awesome. Re with the revolting, with the Hillians. We're all Hillians now. Yeah, it's so funny how the evidence that's that's more like a like a found footage Bigfoot picture that they clearly believe is evidence of these this grand conspiracy. <laughs> uh, just the pictures of walls and everything. It's uh, hilarious. <laughs> that's what I love at the most. It's just a picture. Oh, it must be. It must be bad. The kids are still on the Dom's base. We have to go back for them. For the time being, we better evacuate the sector. Nice strategy. <laughs> All right, here's our next. Here's our next section, or next uh, running section. They give you a minute and thirty to get out of here. That's way more than enough time that we need to get out of here. To be honest, I don't even know what happens if you run out of time for this section. Yeah. Um... Also coming up, uh, we, we've heard him and seen him maybe a couple of times, especially in that cutscene just now, uh, is General Keck, which is the leader of the Alpha Sections, and he's going to be uh, fighting us coming up as well. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to get into our ship, and for some reason, Double H will not enter into the ship without Paige. Without 
Okay, there we go. Without Paige. I was hoping he didn't lock up here. <laughs> that would have been the worst time for his AI to shut down. Um, this is about an average time. Actually, it's a little bit slower than the average time. <laughs> now we're, <laughs> but now we're going into a boss fight, which I am not a very, very big fan of. Because if you manage to die during this fight, you are going to have to restart the whole fight all over again. But what exactly do we have to do in this fight? Yeah, so in this fight, uh, sorry, it's funny because uh, he's called General Keck. Uh, um, so uh, these uh, these Alpha Section Spider has these little red dots, and we want to shoot them either with our lock on mechanic or the uh, quick shots. And the quick bursts we want to use for the ones that are close by and the, the lock ons for the ones that are in the, in the back. Afterwards, he's going to shoot this laser from the center, like engine. Uh, and uh, we want to do one lock on on that and then do that for a couple of times. Uh, this fight is quite difficult to do fast, I'd say. Also, uh, there's these going to be these missiles coming up, and if they hit you once, you they, you take two points of damage and you immediately lose the fight because you only have two parts at this point. Uh, so uh, then you'll have to do the whole fight again. So it's, it's quite a tense moment, but it's uh, it's near, near the end of the run anyway, so it makes uh, makes for a good fight. Sorry, I'm a little focused here. This this fight can be very tense for me. Like I said, I'm not the greatest at it. Yeah, and after this fight here, uh, we want to uh, enter this uh, this uh, spider because there's this tractor beam on us that's keeping us from uh, from. Uh, going further because we want to now after we've done this report we want to um, go to the cloister where there's still all these people that need to be saved uh, but we can't do that while the tractor beam is active so we're just gonna shoot all of these bombs and then we're gonna drop down and head over here we're gonna run around and everybody is pretty full on health so Hopefully this goes well. I am terrible at this fight, just to warn everybody. Let's see. That looks good. That was really good. That was really good. A lot of practice with that fight. <laughs> All right. So now we get this long, long dialogue box with, or dialogue with him, who's basically impaled, sitting there. Yeah, that's General Keck right there. Can we get some F's in chat for, for General Keck? Because <laughs> he's going to die here. All right, and um, the next thing you have to do is you're supposed to hit a button here to get rid of the tractor beam, but the game does not tell you where that button is. It just happens to be at the. It just happens to be right next to you after that dialogue box. So sometimes in like the casual runs, you'll just for completely forget about that. Yeah, or in speed runs, uh, I've forgotten it as well. I'll, oh, I have too. <laughs> I'm gonna take this safely. There we go. Let's go. Yeah, so, so General Keck there explains that uh, because they, with all these kidnappings that they've done, they could drain the flu drain the fluids or life fluids out of these people, and uh, live longer. But apparently, it didn't matter because he he, he got impaled anyway and died, <laughs> died immediately after. All right. So right here, um, I'm gonna have Voiceless explain again what's going on because I have to destroy 15 ships here and I have to try and count them all. Yeah, as we try to enter the cloister here, where, where, where all the people are still captured, the the cavalry uh, appears, and all these ships uh, come and try to try to attack us. Uh, sometimes these shots that they fire can can appear almost randomly from like the walls, so you can get a stray shot uh, and get a couple stray shots, and and if you're unlucky and, and lose a bunch of time, because if you die here, you have to do the fight all over again, which is uh, it's not that long, but it's still 15 ships you have to shoot down. Cool. That was a really good fight. 
So now that we have done that fight, we are going to head up to our landing zone right here, and we are going to head into the uh, final boss fight. And boy, oh boy, is this a final boss fight. Yeah, absolutely. There's some great dialogue, too. A great combination of the story, I'd say. The music, enjoy the music here, because it, it gets even better in the final boss fight. So while we're sitting here, let's sit here and enjoy um, this sequence of events that's about to happen. I really like this final fight. The, yeah. the boss is really cool. He has some good dialogue. We have General Akbar just randomly. It's a trap. Ah, it's a trap. The All right, and here's the fight. So what exactly am I going to be doing here? Yeah, so first of all, uh, we want to kill a bunch of these small uh, Dom sarcophagi, which are very easy to kill now because they just die in one hit. After this, uh, he's going to... The, the Dom's priest in the center, that's what he's called, the Dom's high priest, He um, he's going to fire this laser, and we want to uh, either hit him quickly with the gyro discs or get him a, 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 to shoot a laser in front of Double H, which will block it for us, so we can have a little bit more patience with, with uh, shooting him. But it's uh, quite a uh, quite quite hard to get that right. All right, this next section, hopefully, I can get good luck with. No, I did not get good luck, unfortunately. But I do have an opening right here, which we will take. Cool. Oh, the music's so good. Yeah, it is. All right, so unfortunately, that is the end for uh, for Double H on our team, and we had to do the rest of this fight by ourselves. And the thing about this is, we actually have to go uh, go after the main guy right here by attacking him normally, but he's always in the same pattern. The thing is, it, um. He gives you a little bit of time, even if you kind of forget the pattern, he will give you a little bit of time to attack him. But if you do hit the wrong way, he will attack you, and it is easy to um, to get trapped in a um, cycle, yeah. cycle, a death cycle there. And when he is above you, the way to get him down is to press the dodge button once. Uh, when I was running it casually, I, I, I couldn't figure that out for the longest time. But yeah, it's just the position, like, move yourself in one direction and then attack once, and then he'll, uh, he'll move to the next position. So the next thing that you're going to see here is uh, every movement that you're going to see besides my attacking is all going to be in reverse, my movement and everything. The, the, my timing my timing will end this, not the second that I get the final hit, but when I get the hit in the cutscene. Yeah, so timing is coming up pretty soon. So yeah, the the inverted controls are is because uh, because Jade is uh, losing uh, her mind apparently to to like the Dom's influence. So I, I like it that the controls are reversed because it really you really need to adjust yourself a lot uh, in this last section. Uh, see, I waited too long and he attacked me. That's unfortunate because now we have to go all the way back to uh, this right here. Yeah, this last fight is actually pretty tough. Uh, a lot of players have difficulty with this fight. 
All right, we should be pretty decent now. Shawnee. All right, here we go again. I was so happy that was almost a, a perfect fight, but what can you do when you wait too long? Attack. What? All right. Luckily, we have plenty of time, but unfortunately, I died two times to the boss. That's kind of embarrassing. Oh, yeah, if, if he gets you, oh, that's really unfortunate. Yeah, this fight is really difficult, <laughs> it would seem, I guess. I mean, it really, yeah. There's a lot of tension in this fight as well, because it's near the end of the run, and if, you, if you're about to PP, it uh, doesn't help. All right, come on, Steve. I had this so good with practice. And time. Ooh, well done. All right. So that was Beyond Good and Evil done in under two hours. I hope you enjoyed this run. If you really enjoyed the run, uh, go ahead and go onto our speedrun.com page and look up our Discord because we're always welcome to new people. I'm actually pretty new to this community and I learned it pretty quick and people helped out a ton to help me get, get through this. And this final sequence, the music and this last cutscene is gorgeous to watch as well. So, Also, if you haven't ever seen it, this game, uh, it, it has a long credit sequence where we probably won't show it here, I think. But uh, if you watch all the way to the end of the credits there is something implied there that that sets up the perfect sequel yet they're going to make a prequel unfortunately but uh it, it's it's actually a really cool scene yeah we won't we won't spoil that we want you to play the game for yourself to <laughs> to see that hidden area afterward yeah, that was a good run man yeah great job um, thank you so much, Steve, for uh, running this for Time Capsule. And if you enjoyed this run, please make sure you follow Steve at twitch.tv slash stevetv online. Um, that is going to be a wrap for Time Capsule. But if you want, we can watch the uh, the, the cutscene here. It's up to you. Yeah, the cutscene you can watch. And then after that, it goes right into the credits. The credits are music you've already seen before. But this ending is just really, it's not a long ending, but it's just beautiful to watch. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. And there's the end of Beyond Good and Evil 2. Then we go into the credits, which are very long and unfortunately unskippable. <laughs> so nice. That was pretty awesome. I love her little sm her little smile there at the end. Um, yeah. But uh, thank thank you again, Steve, so much, and thank you, Voiceless, for uh, commentating this run. Uh, thank you to all the um, for, to Vin uh, for running earlier and. Uh, Grizz for commentating and of course to everyone watching thank you so much uh tomorrow at 7 p.m eastern is testing grounds featuring resident evil 3 remake 
and Thursday at 7 p.m. is the first step where Hobbs and Keys will be semi-blind racing Dark Souls 3. Please remember that during this month of June, Games Done Quick will be donating all of its subscriber and bits revenue to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Thank you to everyone who has contributed so far, and I hope everyone is doing their best to stay safe during these crazy times we live in. Um, please remember Black Lives Matter. Much love to all of you, and we will see you next time.